and welcome to another edition of our treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled Fearless Witness, and it's taken from the book of Acts, 26 chapter, verses 1 through 11, and it's for June the 30th, 2024, summer quarter, lesson number five. Now, a little background information. We have a lot of background information for today's lesson. I'll give you the summary here. Paul had been arrested under the ruler Felix, and Felix had left him in jail for a pretty good long time. And Paul had appealed unto Caesar, and that's because the Jews were wanting him to be taken to Jerusalem, and they were plotting an assassination for Paul on his road to Jerusalem. And Felix left that area, and Festus began to take over for Felix. And then Agrippa II came to visit, and the Herods, which was one of the the group that Agrippa was in, they had had a good knowledge of Judaism and were actually more or less sympathetic to Judaism. The only thing about it is they had horrible personality flaws and they were very vain and egocentric and performed a lot of really uh, bad things during their rule. And this pretty much, well, takes us up to where we're at with Festus and Paul being before Festus and Agrippa wanting to hear uh, what Paul had to say. Acts 26 and 1. So Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. And we need to be of that mind to where we can make a defense of the gospel when we are brought before people, when we are being attacked. And that is that can happen under a lot of different scenarios. And we need to be prayed up and have that mind of defending the gospel just like Brother Paul is here. Okay, Acts 26, 2 and 3. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am going to make my defense today against all the accusations of the Jews, especially because you're familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. Now, I want us to notice a couple of things here, and this is especially important for when we get the opportunity to minister to people, to present the gospel. Notice how that Paul is being as polite and courteous as he possibly can. Now, he's not, he's not turning his back on the gospel. He is not condoning a bunch of sin or nothing like that, but every opportunity that he gets, he is being courteous to Agrippa at every opportunity. And we should be that same, have that same mindset when we're out witnessing. Don't come walking up to somebody and say, "Hey, stupid! Let's see if you can if you can understand the gospel," and be insulting with them. Try to be as nice as you possibly can be when you're witnessing. That does not mean that you have to condone sin or anything like that, but try not to be as offensive. Try not to be offensive to people when you're trying to win them to the Lord. Acts 26, 4 and 5. My manner of life from my youth spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time if they are willing to testify that according to the strictest party of our religion, I have lived as a Pharisee. So Paul is going back and pointing to things that was easily verifiable 
and that was very factually based. And when we are testifying to people, we need to be doing that. We need to uh, use pieces of information that are easily verifiable and that is easily verified and that is very factual. Try not to use any type of argument as you go to present the gospel that is obviously wrong. And I think that that's one of the things that the devil has really sowed seeds inside the church of different factual, of different things that they have passed off as facts that are not even remotely close to being facts. I know that there was a track that went around for a long time and may still be going around in different circles that said that NASA was calculating some things mathematically in the stars and they discovered that there was a missing day. And that is absolutely not factually correct, factually accurate. And when you go to try to pass that off as proof that the Bible is true, it makes all of us look, it makes Christianity look false. So you want to make sure that you're extremely accurate and and things can be extremely verifiable when you're trying to win people to the Lord. Do not bend the reality in the least little bit when you are testifying for the Lord. Okay. Acts 26. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? And Paul is making a common, a drawing a reference to a very common demand, a very common belief among Jews, and the Pharisees were very big on believing in the resurrection of the dead. It was the Sadducees who believed that life completely ended at death, and so. Paul is really tying into the beliefs that people already had. Acts 26, 9 through 11. I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority from the chief priest, but when they were put it to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Now, notice how that Paul is underscoring his own failings before he came into into the church, into the cause of Christ. And sometimes you will occasionally hear people who will downplay their own failings before they became a Christian, but they're very open in pointing out the failings of other people. I've heard people stand up in in a testimony service And instead of giving their own testimony, we talk about how that it was so miraculous that so-and-so got saved because they were so sorry and low down before they got in the church. Well, friends, if you're going to relay things talking about people's failings, let's make sure it's your own failings and not the failings of other people. Okay, and one of the things that I found to be very, very important when I was studying and thinking about things, how that if you look at the book of Matthew, Matthew is the only book, the only book, the only gospel that lays out that Matthew was a publican. All the rest of them mention Matthew and talk about Matthew but they do not mention that he was a publican. It's only in Matthew's gospel that outlines he is a publican because publicans were very very poorly thought of among the Jewish people of the time. 
And Matthew made sure that he underscored the fact that he had been a publican before Jesus called him and saved him and got him in the ministry. And that's the way that we need to to be. We need to let the person who did those bad things be the one who stands up and testifies about doing those bad things. A couple of concluding thoughts. First off, we need to be as dedicated at telling the story of the Lord Jesus Christ and at every opportunity we need to be sharing the gospel. And if you read through that entire presentation to Agrippa that Paul gave, it's real obvious that he is not really so much trying to get himself out of trouble as he is trying to present the soul-saving gospel and, and present his testimony of the saving grace of God to Agrippa and Bernice and how that he is trying to present the gospel in a, in a way that could get them saved. And we need to be that way. We need to, at every opportunity, to give the gospel and to tell people about how that the Lord had saved us, and yes, he can save you. And friends, if you're listening to this Sunday School presentation and you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, let me tell you something. That has been the most important aspect of my life was my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When I went down to the altar when I was about 13 years old, you can see the life I lived beforehand, how that I had been into all kinds of meanness. Uh, I had thrown multiple drunks before my 13th birthday, and I was well on my way of being an alcoholic, of all kinds of stupid things that I was about ready to get into and had gotten into. And when I went down to the altar at Union Avenue Baptist Church, all those many, 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 many years ago, it made such a profound difference in my life. And instead of um, instead of being an alcoholic and being homeless, like my biological father was, instead of being like that, you know, I got to be, got to do some of the funnest, best things, and I've, I've, I've had a blessed life. I've had beautiful, ch- I've raised beautiful children. I have beautiful grandchildren. I've got patents. I've written magazine articles. I've created software that's sold all over the world. And all of that is because of one thing. That's because I went down to the altar all of those years ago, well over 50 years ago. I went down to the altar and met the Lord Jesus Christ. And he saved me and set my feet heading on the the right path. And it's all because of Jesus, that relationship with Jesus, that my life has been so blessed. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.